It's going to be a fantastic competition here in St. Stephen, New Brunswick. We have over 20 competitors competing for $4,000 in prize money and eight different events. They'll be battling each other and battling the clock in the obstacle pole, the standing block shot, and the chainsaw right here on Lumberjacks. Lumberjacks is sponsored by Echo, professional quality, ask any pro, crown, protect, maintain, save, Bodog, be a player, Red Pine Wilderness Lodge, simply unreal fishing. The spectacular setting of the Fairmount Algonquin here in St. Andrews by the Sea, New Brunswick, a world-class tourist destination to be sure. Hi, I'm Bill Deba, host of Lumberjacks TV series, and with my co-host, Rod Cumberland, Lumberjack Sport Analyst, we've had a chance to stay here the last couple of days. What a spectacular place. Uh, lucky you guys. This building's over 100 years old, beautiful, Canada's most premier seaside resort, and a lot of royalty have stayed here over the years. Prime Ministers from Johnny McDonald right down through the line. And we're actually heading to Lumberjack competition down the road, 30 kilometers down the road, St. Stephen, New Brunswick. It's not the first kick of the can for them. They've hosted Lumberjack competitions for years. That's right. St. Stephen has had competitions for over 15 years now, expecting a huge crowd to more over 1,000 spectators. And we've got the best Lumberjacks in the Maritimes and also Don Lambert and J.P. Mercier thrown in from Quebec. Now this week we're covering the standing block chop and the obstacle pull buck, among other events, but the two different skill sets to win those events and excel. Yeah, that's right. Obstacle pull buck, usually you think of the big burly lumberjacks swinging their axes. Obstacle pull, totally different event. Takes a lot of speed and agility to get up that pole with a chainsaw. Standing block chop though, you'd expect the big guns to come out. The guys that can really swing an axe, J.P. Mercier, Don Lambert, Moyle, Paul Woodland, even uh, Mario Bork. Some of those guys should rise to the top of the heap of that event. Now we're going to look at last week's standings. We've got Paul Woodland in first place with 150 points. Lambert and Conrad right on his heels at 135 each, heading into the standing block chop here in St. Stephen. Total, we had 12 choppers, six each of two. We're going to be starting off with Cameron and Cumberland, a couple of New Brunswick boys. That's right, and really rookies at the sport, Bill. Ryan Cameron, he's uh, learning to chop at the University of New Brunswick. He's still there. He's got one more year left. Ben, of course, he's learning to chop out behind the barn and out in our woodlot. So uh, it would be interesting to see how they make out in this first heat of the standing block. Well, the young people, they ought to learn how to hit their lines right off the top there. Ben is a little bit high on his mark lines, but he adjusted by coming up on his lower lines. Yeah, you see the grimace in his face, really swinging hard, swinging fast. Both these guys, you see there's some steps in their chopping. That means that really they're chopping wood that's already been chopped once. It's really a waste of uh, energy when they're when they're doing that. Both guys in their backside right now, and Ryan Cameron is a little bit more of a clubber. He's not sliding his hands quite as much. No, but Ben, look at the power and the swing. He's hitting the wood really hard. He's going to be ready to drive off here. Driving off with a 29.66. Cumberland sets the time to beat in the first heat. Talk to me about extending your arms upon impact in an event like the standing block chop. Hmm. I don't really know much about it. I just kind of, I guess, follow my lines is the best one I know. And... Uh, it hard. Heat number two coming up with Roger McPhee taking on Luke Bork. A couple of New Brunswick boys once again. Roger from Petticodiac. Luke is from just down the road in St. John, New Brunswick. We haven't seen him too much on Lumberjacks. You know, he's probably not quite as practiced as he'd like to be. That's right. He hasn't taken a lot of time. He's admitted that already to me this year. He'd like to practice a lot more than he has. So he's just showing up here and going at it. He's a big, strong guy. He's actually the son of Vital Bork, a member of the New Brunswick Lumberjack Hall of Fame and a great standing block cutter. He's got a wide open face there, probably taking a little bit too much wood. Roger McPhee, there's his shot right there. Nice clean lines, nice little face there. But Luke Bork, he's over the backside, a real stair pattern on the front. That's right, and Roger, you see he's following his lines really well, but his, his pace is pretty slow here right now in the standing block chop. Luke Bork looks a little bit low compared to his front side there. He's trying to drive a whole bunch of wood, maybe too much wood. Roger McPhee may be able to catch him and beat him at this time. Luke Bork drives off at a time of 42.65 in the standing block chop. Now on your front side, your last three or four heats, you were unsure if you were going to do some drivers up or some drivers down. You seem to be a difficult time making a decision there. Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to leave Finn on the other side, on the far side. And uh, I came in, and I, that's why I, I gave two more on the way out before I turned. 
Heat number three in the standing block shot features Trevor Dillman taking on Nick Graham. Still a time to beat is under 30 seconds at 29.66. Set in the first heat by Ben Cumberland. Now Nick Graham from Prince Edward Island. Trevor Dillman. Both these guys actually have learned from Nova Scotia Agricultural College at the Chopping. That's right. They actually competed there together in the uh, in 2000s. They graduated here a few years ago. Both of them got their blocks greased up, their axes greased up. You can see a little bit of that white grease on Nick's block. Doing a great job swinging, hitting his lines well. Trevor Dillman, I've always thought he faces the wood a little bit too much. Nick Graham, a nice powerful swing, not quite as fast. Trevor faces the log, big glancing blow there too. Oh yeah, then that throws you a little bit. You've got to get your feet reset and back on, but he's, he's back in swinging hard again. And Nick is still keeping up a decent pace there. Trevor having a hard time hitting his marks. Got a little bit of a beaver, the wood chipping going on there. Nick Graham, not quite lowering the time to beat, comes in at 33.94. Now, I've seen you a number of times over the years, Nick, and sometimes things don't go so well, sometimes they go well. That one went pretty well, didn't it? Yeah, some days I have a bad day, some days I have good days, and that chop was a good one for me. I was happy with it. You know, you just mentioned to me a minute ago, it's about following the lines, and that's going to save you a lot of energy, right? Yeah, if you follow your lines, you can make good cuts, and it goes well for you, yeah. Well, there it is, halfway through the standing block chop after heat number three, Ben Cumberland's training in the backyard of the family farm with a 29.66 as leading the way.